Our top focus as of now, Israel is moving closer to a fifth election in almost four years after lawmakers gave an initial nod to dissolve parliament. The Knesset voted unanimously to dissolve uh, in a pre-reading of the dissolution bill. The bill is expected to be finalized next week. Upon passing this pre-reading, the bill then must still get through a parliamentary committee. It then has to pass with an absolute majority in the Knesset. Once the bill is passed, the Knesset will dissolve itself. Yair Lapid will take over as the country's interim prime minister. Elections will be held in October after the Jewish high holidays. Lapid will also be the one to greet U.S. President Joe Biden when he visits Israel next month. Lapid will also continue acting as the country's foreign minister. And as for Bennett, he will hold the Iran file in the interim government. Reports suggest that the coalition's plan is to have an election on its own terms. They did not want to be forced out by Benjamin Netanyahu. But the new vote could set stage for Bibi's return to power. Netanyahu's camp is already courting members of the Knesset. The former prime minister has two options ahead of him. He can either gather enough members and form an alternative government and could be a win-win situation for all. Israel would not then have to go through another election and Netanyahu will be back as Israel's prime minister. The second option, if Netanyahu does not have the numbers, Israel will then go to the polls again. Even there, the Likud party could emerge as the biggest one. Opinion polls predict that Netanyahu's Likud could receive 36 seats, while Lapid's Yesh Atid could get 20 seats. Even then, the two sides would still have to cobble up a coalition. So even with these elections, a clear majority for either sides is highly unlikely. And to understand what's happening in Israel a little bit better, joining us now is our correspondent Jody Cohen, who joins us live from Ronana. Jody, my first question, what can you tell us about what's happening today? We've been tracking the story daily. You've been giving us inputs. With the dissolution of the bills, do you expect former Prime Minister Netanyahu to be able to form an alternative government? So that is the key question at the moment. The dissolution bills are now with the House committee currently, and it's their job to decide which committee will examine the bills. That will be either the House committee or the Constitution committee. Now, the House committee is chaired by Nir Orbach, who quit the coalition government, and he reportedly would like to allow more time for former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to possibly be able to form a, an alternative government based on the previous seats from the last election and thereby avoid another election now. Now, the Constitution Committee is led by a Labour MP, Gilad Kariv, who would like to expedite the process. But Orba hasn't convened the House Committee for them to be able to make that decision in order to delay matters. Once it is convened, convened the majority of Orba's committee are actually from the coalition. So they're likely to vote for the Constitution Committee to have a look at these bills. And then it's expected to pass next week through the parliamentary legislative process. There's also a consideration of a bill that they're talking about saying that if you've been indicted, if you're an MK who's been indicted, then you cannot form a government. And this is seen to affect Prime Minister Benjamin, former Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who of course has been indicted. That bill isn't expected to pass. They don't um, have enough time. They don't really have enough support. So it is likely that, B that Bibi could still have the opportunity to form an alternative government. He's got 55 seats. He needs, of course, 61. We know that Ayelet Shaked, a longtime Bennett um, ally, is saying that she is willing to sit with Netanyahu under an alternative government. There's still a slim chance. We're looking at elections now. The latest date being talked about is actually the 1st of November. That's still not being determined. The polls are showing continuing deadlock unless alliances shift. And in the latest, we're hearing that Prime Minister Naftali Bennett is considering not running, which would impact his Yamina MKs and could tip the balance of how things progress going forward. Right, Jody, I think there's a bigger question here. How are the prospect of elections impacting Israel in the region, especially with the upcoming crucial visit of the US President Joe Biden? Yes, so while domestically things are obviously up in the air, in terms of foreign affairs, it looks as if it's uh, business as usual. The foreign minister, Lapid, is going to be visiting Turkey today to discuss security cooperation there. The visit from President Biden is expected to go ahead in mid-July, where there will be a focus on a Middle East air defense alliance. That will be a missile and naval defense to protect against drone, rocket and cruise missile attacks by Iran and its proxies. 
They'll also be um, working on, we're hearing, a Saudi-Israel roadmap to normalization. So we're not looking at a normalization agreement, but we could be looking at smaller steps. For example, Israeli airlines being allowed to fly over Saudi airspace to India and China, for example. So domestically, while things are uncertain, on a global regional level, it's business as usual. Absolutely, Jody. Thanks for summing that up for us. Thanks for joining us on Beyond World is One at this hour. Thank you. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.